Galactic Standard Date Year 11356 Day 88 Soul Standard Date 3 of the 31st 3267 As Araya had just woken up after two whole days of arguing over whether we should jump into the blade held at their throats whilst hoping for the best, or to placate the one holding it, as Araya wished with all her heart that the ancient gods would come back and deal with this, However, it was just her and 16 others who truly had the power to make this work. She needed to do everything in her power to ensure that Tama was able to complete his mission before the rest of the council let fear take them. While at the same time she needed to build the defensive armada and conscript the necessary forces without letting any of the Razari Alliance see the massive and sudden spike in military buildup. Azariah Azariah palmed her face and let out a deep sigh before getting out of bed and setting off to work. She tapped her calmly and sent the call to the Sithis council member Resla. Two rings later, Resla answered. Yes, Azariah, I am quite overloaded at the moment, so I hope you don't have too much to dump on my plate, she said, exhaustion conveyed in every word. Azariah started walking towards Resla's office. You haven't slept yet, have you? she asked. Resla let out a hissing laugh. Shah, shah, shah. No, I have not. How can I sleep whilst the lives of all our people may be at stake? I have made so many calls and put so many things into motion it makes me wonder what we have been doing for the last 50 years. Yet still, I have made more calls, many more proposals to file away, and many more fires to put out. So, what did you need? She said. As Araya sighed once more. First I will help you with the efforts you have already put forth, and then I will need your help in trying to set up a task force to get back those three Atene that flew off to their possible deaths. With luck, they may have already made peaceful contact, but... If they have already perished, then I would like to be able to warn Tama. It should only take two days for a task force to make it to the ship they are on. Surprisingly, they haven't moved at all according to the hypertransponders they brought with them, she said, as she opened the doors to Resla's office. Resla stopped her work, hung up the comlick and uncurled from her heating stone. Yes, well, that was fast. You can get started on the fires they need putting out then. The Razan. Fluent, Dambi, and Milin are absolutely losing their collective minds. The council members are panicking, and their panic has run down the line in their speeches as rumour after rumour gets spread about the destruction of the compact. It has just gotten worse the further it goes along too. I just saw a post where a few thousand Yambi were flaming their tentacles around with the caption, We need answers. If the fires aren't put out, we will have riots and anarchy in some worlds where the home species are a little bit more... excitable, she said flicking her tail out in annoyance, causing a crack to resound through the office. 4,235 light years away from the Galactic Compact, the flagship of the Alpha Strike Force, Glory to the Emperor, was preparing to warp to Sector 39B Gamma, where the ship Amaryllis was sitting after having received a communique from an old AI, Terminatus. Apparently there was a first contact scenario that was handled poorly, but they have ambassadors from this Galactic Compact. Arc Primarch Aurelius Devin had the Emperor Basilus himself aboard his ship, so it was imperative that he handled himself with the utmost grace and fortitude in the presence of their lord. Aurelius looked to the Emperor, who was in a freshly assembled throne behind him. My lord, it appears that one Catherine Dulassi has made first contact with a species known as the Ateni. They are reportedly from a government known as the Galactic Compact, he said with confidence. Basilus looked to Aurelius and sighed a deep rumbling sigh that was partially synthesized. Please tell me that they weren't cute in any way, shape, or form, he said, suddenly exhausted. Aurelius froze. Um, uh, well, about that, your lordship, sir, they are, well, mice, sir. They are two foot tall, bipedal, sentient mice, he said, lacking the confidence he had before seeing the Emperor's reaction to hearing the Catherine's name. Basilus brought his hands to his face and whispered a deep, synthesized, fuck. Aurelius went over all the information he could find on Catherine de Lassie, but there wasn't much. Surprisingly, a lot was classified even to himself, though he is the Arc Primarch. All he could find was her name, age, and a picture of her with a man that looked similar to the previous Arc Primarch. That's when it dawned on him. She's not just a cargo holder, is she, my lord? He asked, a single drop of sweat forming beneath the titanium plating on the side of his head. Basilus looked up from his hands and looked at Aurelius. No, she is not some nobody cargo hauler. She does indeed run our supply lines, but that isn't all there is to Catherine. I have known her since she was a child. 
Her father was the man who made our immortality possible while also attracting the Azarine Frecht. Her uncle was the R Primer before you. Naturally, she was as classified as possible so as to protect her from those who would do her harm. I care for her as if she were my own daughter. However, even though her personality is somewhat problematic, she is an incredibly intelligent and capable woman. I am willing to bet she put fear into the hearts of those Xenos, though it was most certainly not her intention, he said. Aurelius was outstanding. The Emperor truly was full of love, despite the fact that he was as malicious looking as was humanly possible, as a towering metal man of 17 feet with matte black armour that had crimson inlays covered in nine inch spikes and an outline of black fire around them. Aurelius kneeled before the Emperor and asked, What shall we do, my lord? Basilus scratched at his chin before responding. Engage warp engines for the fleet. We are going to the Amaryllis. We are already in an interdimensional war. We don't need any more bloodshed, so let's not add a bunch of frightened Xenos to the Azarian side, he said. Aurelius stood at attention and saluted with one hand, bored into a fist slamming into his sternum. Yes, my lord. Your wish is my command, he yelled, before turning to the bridge and opening comms to the whole fleet. Task Force Alpha, engage your warp drives and align yourself with Target Sector 39B Gamma. We are warping there under direct orders from the Emperor himself. Any mistakes made will also be witnessed by the Emperor as he is aboard my ship. Do not falter, men. Do not disgrace yourselves in front of our Lord. And, most importantly, never forget that we fight for the glory of the Emperor, as well as all of mankind itself, he yelled. Aurelius was brimming with pride at his speech that he was able to make beneath the Emperor's own gaze. He walked back to Basilus and saluted once more before taking his seat and engaging warp.